Okay, so hello everyone again. This is lecture number three from the chapter System of Particles and Rotational Motion. In this, we will move forward with the concept of motion of center of mass and then let us understand some different concepts today. So, this is lecture number three from the chapter System of Particles and Rotational Motion. I am Samir Lavankar. Let's begin our discussion. So, currently we are being done with the topics introduction, center of mass and currently we are on the third subtopic that is motion of center of mass. Okay. So, before going into a further discussion, yesterday when we were solving one of the example, I didn't completely made you understand the concept. So, in the final question regarding your this Uniform circular motion. Let me just explain this question again. So let me just explain this question again. So the question simply states that a circular plate of uniform thickness of diameter 56 centimeter, right? Uh, and a circular portion of diameter 42 centimeter is being removed. Okay. Now, uh, what we basically need to do? We need to find the position of the center of mass of the remaining portion. Basically, we just need to find this way or the center of mass of this way. Okay. So now we know what is the center of mass basically. A center of mass in y direction would be zero only because there is no shifting being done. Right? If there is no shifting being done, the center of mass in y direction would be zero. Let us just calculate the value of center of mass change in the x direction. Okay. Yeah. Initially, the values of x i is zero, y i is zero. Now the values of y f is zero. Just calculate the value of xf and you are good to go. Okay. So how to calculate the values of xf? xf is nothing but equal to m1 x1 minus m2 x2 because the mass is negative this time upon m1 minus m2. Okay. Fine. So what is m1 here basically? m1 gram is nothing but equal to density rho multiplied by volume. This is equal to density rho multiplied by area into thickness. Okay. So therefore, if we just put this complete concept here, similarly M2 will be nothing but equal to density rho into area A2 multiplied by thickness T. If you see the figure clearly, the thickness is same for both of them. So what will be the value of XF? XF can be written as nothing but equal to rho A1 T X1 minus rho a2 t x2 upon rho a1 t minus rho a2 t. Okay. So rho, 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 rho can get cancelled. T, 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 t can get cancelled, which leaves us with a1 x1 minus a2 x2 upon a1 minus a2. Now look at this scenario very carefully. What is A1 here? A1 is simply pi by 4 into 56 square. What is A2 basically? It's pi by 4 into 42 square. Fine. Now what is the value of X1? X1 was the initial value of the center of mass of the, or basically X1 is basically the center of mass of 56 centimeter square graph. So 56 centimeter square, 56 centimeter square. So the radius or the circle with center uh, with rate diameter as 56 centimeter will have its x1 value equal to zero because it is lying at the same portion. But what, it, what is the center of mass of this small circle? This will be at some distance. Let us calculate a distance. Okay. So the diameter, sorry, this value will be 56 by 2 and similarly this value will be 42 by 2. So what will be this value basically? This value will be basically nothing but 56 by 2 minus 42 by 2. Okay. So if you just simply calculate this value, you will get the answer as equal to 7 centimeter. So I, I hope you got how we calculated what is the distance of this uh, center of mass of the area of the circle which is been deleted. So we just did 56 by 2 minus 41 by 2 to calculate this small area. This is nothing but 7 centimeters. So therefore, x2 value is given to you as 7. Now it's just formula putting. So we will just write pi by 4 into 56 squared into 0 minus pi by 4 
into 42 square into minus, sorry, 7, because minus is directly implemented, upon pi by 4 <coughs> into 56 square, minus pi by 4 into 42 square. Okay, so when you just calculate it, you will get the answer exactly as minus 9 centimeters. And that is how we can say that is a shift of uh, the center of mass in the negative direction by an amount 9 centimeters. Okay, so now, now I hope it is clear. Sorry for the small modification I did. So I basically combined some sort of that. Uh, sorry for that. But okay, so now it is clear. I have understood from the basic how it, this thing came. So therefore, the final answer is your 9 centimeter. Uh, minus nine. Okay. Fine. So that thing being said, now let us move with motion of center of mass only. So the last concept which we were offering here was we got that mass m is basically equal to summation force external. Okay. Here I was uh, I basically needed to explain to you why we are understanding or why we are taking the summation of internal forces to be zero. Let us take our case of only summation of two particles. Okay. So let us take only these two particles here. Okay. Let us take the mass of this to be M1, mass of this to be M2. Okay. Now there will be some force acting in this direction, right? Which is internal force. Let I write the internal force. Okay. There will be some force acting. So in this direction also. Why? using Newton's third law of motion, which is F internal only. Correct. So if there is a force acting in the same, along the same line, but in opposite sense, then what will be its summation? Its summation will be equal to zero. Right. Similarly, let us do the same thing for, let us do the same thing for three particles. Let us take this as mass M1, take this as mass M2, Take this as mass m3. Now what will happen? Now simply, uh, so due to this m2 and m3 force, they will apply some force in this direction and in this direction, right? But mass m1 will apply the similar force in this direction and in this direction. You can see here also the complete summation of the force internal is equal to zero. Hence what we basically say that this mass ma Hence, we say that this mass Ma is nothing but equal to F1 plus F2 plus Fc total will be Fn. But here, Fn is basically only external force. Okay. Hence, it is written that the last derived equation is M into A is basically equal to F external. Where F external is what? F external represents the sum of all external forces acting on the particles of this instrument. Okay. So I hope this thing is clear to you. I will just state the complete concept here by writing an equation also. Yes, so let me just, just write the equation. The he, equation here states that this equation, this equation, basically this equation states that the center of mass of a system of particles, center of mass of a system of particles moves as if all the mass of the system was concentrated at the center of mass. <clears throat> and all the external forces are applied at that point. So more general definition of center of mass is being obtained to us. Okay. So what is it is what it what it is written? What is written here? The center of mass of a system of particles moves as if all the mass of the system was concentrated at the center of mass, right? And all the external forces are applied at that point. Okay. Understanding it using a simple example. So let us assume that there was this mass of body M, right? It is a system of particles and it has been moving with some velocity V, right? And it, is have a const it has some constant acceleration A. So basically what it is analogous to, it is analogous to, let us calculate the center of mass of this particle. So because it's a rectangular particle, we can assume that it is lying somewhere here. So this can be assumed as same as some point particle or the center of mass which has a mass which is equal to m moving with the velocity v and an acceleration v. Okay, so I hope you understood what we did here. So basically, 
So to obtain this equation, we did not need to specify the nature of the system of particles. The system may be a collection of particles in which there may be all kinds of internal motions, or it may be a rigid body which is either a pure translation motion or a combination of translation and rotation motion. And either three or the other, we can directly implement this equation, which is mass into acceleration is equal to force external. Okay. So whatever is the system and the motion of its individual particles, the center of mass always moves. The center of mass always moves in this fashion. Okay. Uh, so one more thing, one more thing to explain to you. Just, uh, just let me add one page here. So basically, uh, so basically, what I was saying that instead, of, uh, let us say, let us as you let let me just first tell more about. So let us understand that instead of treating this extended body as single particles, now what we are doing, we are basically treating them as system of particles. Okay. So basically, now we are using the terms such as extended bodies or basically system of particles. Correct. So now what we are basically doing, so we are treating this extended volume as a, as a single particle as we have done in previous concepts, right? So we can now treat them as a system of particles. Similarly, we can obtain the translation component of their motion, the motion of center of mass of the system by taking the mass system to be concentrated at the center of mass. So basically, just this explanation is being explained here. So what, if, what, what I'm saying, so either what we can do, we can directly take the center of mass of this complete body and uh, perform all the concepts such as your acceleration, velocity, forces using this simple code. Right? So that was the only observation we also implemented previously also and that's how we are working upon. Let us explain you one more concept here. Let me explain you using this concept. Okay. So let us assume. So I'm just telling you the advantage or the power that the center of mass holds. Okay. So let us assume that, uh, so in the chapter motion in a plane, we have understood some, a concept which is called as projectile motion. Okay. So let us assume there was an object or a ball here, which was being in a projectile motion. Okay. But before reaching the projectile motion, what happened? There was an explosion which occurred here, which led to this ball being distributed to very very tiny pieces okay so if it is assumed that there was no external force happening and only this implosion was being occurred then what we can say that this all the system of particles will all complete its projectile motion in the similar fashion okay so there may be explosion occurring there but the path of the fragment would be same fine that is one of the also uh, as a explanation that uh, we can understand that yes, our complete concept of understanding the system of particles as an as a, or extended body has to be concentrated on the center of mass is correct. So we can go with this assumption or we can go with this analogy. Okay. So that is a, that is the complete end of this concept also. So that thing being said, now let us move to new subtopic, which is linear momentum of a system of particles. Okay, so just uh, going before this topic, let me do a simple revision of the previous concept. So we started with understanding about your uh, translation motion, then rotational motion, and then uh, translation plus rotational motion. Okay, so in this complete understanding, we will always assume that uh, the rotation is always around a fixed axis. Okay, we also uh, we also understood about concepts of rigid body, right? Then the second concept about center of mass in uh, vector form, we basically got that this vector R is nothing but equal to integration R d m one capital. Here, yeah. then the third concept about motion of center of mass, we basically got that uh, m capital V is nothing but equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 till m n v n and similarly mass times acceleration is equal to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus dot 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 till m n a n which is also equal to f1 plus f2 plus dot 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 till f n right but we know that internal forces will give you the answer as zero therefore 
we said that this mass times acceleration is nothing but equal to force external right and then we understood one concept that uh, our extended word is we can assume the complete mass to be concentrated at a single point on the body which is center of mass and moving with the and that center of mass is moving with velocity v and having a constant acceleration a fine so that all things being explained now let us move on with a new sub topic which is linear momentum of a system of particles okay so we have understood the linear momentum concept in your laws of motion also so how it is being defined basically so linear momentum is nothing but mass times velocity okay so let us understand that concept more and then let us apply the same, same concept into your uh, system of particles fine the linear momentum of a system of particles need to be understood here okay so first of all let me write so linear momentum of a particle is defined as p it is denoted by p which is nothing but equal to m into v okay so please remember here p is also a vector and v is also a vector so both these are vector quantities okay now moving on so now using the newton second law what we can write using newton second law of motion what we can write we can write this force is nothing but equal to change in the linear momentum so if you have refer to the lectures of laws of motion you know what is force force is nothing but the rate of change of linear momentum okay where f is the force on the particle force on the particle okay so now let us consider uh, now let us consider for the system of particles okay so let us consider a system of n particles uh, let me just write that also let us consider because the final aim is we need to find the linear momentum for a system of particles correct so let us consider a system of n particles consider a system of n particles Correct and uh, with masses, so masses would be m one, m two, right? This m one, m two, dot 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 till m n. Correct and uh, what will be the velocities? With velocities, basically v one, v two, dot 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 till v. Okay, so respectively. Now the particles may be interacting and have external forces acting on them. So what will be the linear momentum now? So we have already proved it in uh, when we were trying to. of mass uh, so basically when we differentiated that equation we directly got mb is equal to m1 plus m2 v2 again we are just trying to calculate that thing only here so therefore what will be the linear momentum of some of particles so therefore the linear momentum of a system of particles is defined as the vector sum of All individual particles is defined as the vector sum of all individual particles of the system. So what has been written here? It is simply written that the vector p is nothing but equal to p one plus p two. So dot 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 till p n. So similarly, what we can write, we can write p is nothing but equal to m one v one plus m two v two till m n v. Okay. So I hope this is clear to you. In other form, uh, we have also also proved this that this is nothing but equal to m into the. Okay. So if I just write this concept also in fact form. I can write that the total momentum of the system of particles. I can write the total momentum of a system of particles is equal to the product of what total mass and the velocity of its center of. Mass. Please remember, it's velocity of its center of mass. Okay, so I'm just writing it is equal to the Product of product of the total mass of the system and the velocity of its center of mass. Okay, so I hope this concept is clear to you. So now, uh, so now let us uh, do the same same analogy here. So which so that to prove that this is nothing but same as the concept which you just obtained for force also. Okay, 
if it has differentiate, so differentiating the above equation, if you differentiate the above equation, what we will get? We will get basically with respect to time. So with respect to time, we will get dp by dt is nothing but equal to dp by dt and dp by dt. Then dp by dt is nothing but equal to your m dv by dt, which is nothing but equal to mass into acceleration. And in the previous concept only, we have directly implied that this is nothing but equal to force external. Therefore, this dv by dt is nothing but equal to f external. Okay. So that is how we have proved that the change in the linear momentum of a system of particles is nothing but equal to the external force applied on the system. So this is nothing but uh, this statement. Uh, so this is nothing but your Newton's second law extended to a system of particles. So Newton's second law extended to a system of particles. Okay. So this is that equation here. Now suppose, suppose now, now we are just taking some cases. Okay. So because we need to understand each and every concept clearly, let us take some cases so that we can understand what is basically the conservation of momentum. Okay. So let us assume now, let us assume that the sum of the forces, these, this sum of the forces which is acting on all the system of particles is basically zero. So suppose, suppose that the sum of Suppose that the sum of external forces, suppose that the sum of external forces acting on a system of particles is zero. That is, so basically what they are saying, they are basically saying that the value of F external is equal to zero. So if this is the case, what will happen? That dp by dt will be equal to zero. So in differential form, we can say that dp by dt is zero. Or in other form, we can simply say that the value of momentum, the value of linear momentum is constant. Okay. So thus, when total, when the total external force acting on a system of particles is zero, the total linear momentum of the system is constant. This is nothing but the law of conservation of the total linear momentum of a system of particles. Okay. So we'll write the complete statement which I just said. So thus when, uh, when the external force, when the external force acting on a system of particles is zero, then the external force acting on the system of particles is zero. What we can say that the total linear momentum of the system is constant. The Total linear momentum, momentum of the system is constant. And if it is constant, then this is nothing but the law of conservation of total linear momentum. This is law of conservation of this is law of conservation of linear momentum of a system of particles. Okay. I hope I made you understand clearly how this uh, conservative linear momentum came into picture and how we got this value of P as constant and how we can basically say that when the extra F external is zero, we can say that the uh, law of conservation of linear momentum of a system of particles is F. Fine. So that thing being said, now, uh, now basically from the equations, this also means that when the total external force system is zero, the velocity of the center of mass remains constant. Okay. So from this equation, uh, which equation I am talking about. So if as p is equal to mb, so we know that p is equal to mb, or basically this p is equal to mb. So from here we can say that as p is equal to capital mb is equal to constant, we can also say that, we can say that the velocity of 
the velocity of the center of or, or the the velocity of center of mass remains constant remains constant okay so i hope you understood this this concept also Uh, so basically, we assume throughout the discussion on system of particles in this chapter that the total mass of the system remains constant. So because F capital M is already constant, we can say that if m v is constant, that means v will also be constant. Okay. So note uh, also uh, also what to, so now let us move forward. So note that on the account of this internal forces, the forces that is exerted by the particles on one another. The individual particles may have complicated trajectory. So one example has been explained here. Let us first look at this example here. Yet, if the total external force acting on the system is zero, the center of mass moves with constant velocity. That is, moves uniformly in a straight line like a free particle. So, what it is basically saying. Let us understand that concept here. So, uh, how we can how can I explain you? Just wait. Okay. So, let us see this. First of all. dp by dt is equal to zero. What does it basically mean? It basically means that p is constant. Okay, and if p is constant, that means it is constant in all the three directions. Okay, let us assume that we are talking about three-dimensional space. That means what we can say that there would have been some momentum in x direction also. There would have been some momentum in y direction also, and there would have been some momentum in z direction also. Correct? Because p is a vector. Okay. Now, if if the value of p is constant, then we can simply say that p x is also some value constant. Let me denote this as c one. T y is also constant. Let me denote that value as c two. And p z is also constant. Let me denote that value as c three. Fine. Let's okay till now. Now here p x and p z are the components of the total linear momentum vector p along the x y and z axis, which are namely c one, c two, and c three. And they are c one, c two, c three are constants. Okay. Now let us understand this using a simple example here. Okay. So let us understand this example clearly. I will try to make you understand whatever is whatever is being done here. Okay. So let us let us consider this. So this is a radioactive decay happening. Okay. So basically there is a radioactive particle here, and it is being decomposed into two different parts. Okay. So let us try to understand what is being under understood, what is being explained here. So let us consider the radioactive decay of a moving unstable particle like the radium. So R is basically radius. So the nucleus of the radium is being used as an unstable particle, which is going to be decayed. Okay. So this radium nucleus, this radium nucleus, get disintegrated into two different ways. Two different uh, basically nucleus. One is that of a radon. One is that of a radon, and second is that of a alpha particle or basically helium. So alpha particle, or we can also write it as helium. Okay, we won't go into nuclear physics here. We just need to understand what is being, uh, how is this linear momentum being conserved. Okay. So now the forces leading to the decay are all internal to the system because there is some sort of disintegration happening here. There would have been some force here which tries to break apart, and hence there is a uh, nuclear disintegration happening. So here we are not applying any external force. That's why the complete force which has been acted upon, which leads to this disintegration, is basically due to your uh, internal forces. Okay. So the forces leading to the decay are internal to the system, and the external forces on the system are negligible. So what we can say, we can basically say that F external is zero. If external is zero, that means what we can say that dP by dt is constant. If dP by dt is constant, that means we can say P is constant. That means what we can say, we can simply say that the in, uh, initial momentum is equal to final momentum. Okay, so the total linear momentum of the system is the same before and after decay. The two particles produced in the decay, that is the radon nucleus and the alpha particle, moves in different directions. So let us assume that they move in different directions in such a way that the center of masses moves along the same path along with the original decaying radium nucleus as well. Okay, so what is the complete explanation being explained here? Let me try to understand, make you understand. Okay, so let's go with the simple mathematics here only. Okay, so there is some mass, uh, or basically radon here. Okay, so if I assume this complete disintegration into two, uh, let's say like this, in x and y axis. Okay, so till this point it is okay. 
till this point both the system of particles were here only and it was in moving with some velocity v okay at this point what happened at this point what happened there was a disintegration happen let us assume this to be at some velocity m1 and let us assume this to be having some mass m2 here it has been assumed that m1 and m2 is equal to this capital mass m okay now they are saying as only as as long as f external is zero we can say that p is conserved okay and if p is conserved please remember if p is conserved then what we can say that uh, this value of m2 will be moving with some velocity v2 and this m1 will be moving with some velocity v1 okay so basically what we can say we can basically say we can resolve this into two components basically v1 cos theta and v1 sin theta and similarly v2 cos theta and v1 sin theta so we can basically say that m1 v1 so we can say m1 v1 cos theta let's say it is theta 1 plus m2 v2 cos theta 2 is equal to mv okay so when we calculate this value of m1 v1 cos theta 1 plus m2 v2 cos theta 2 you will basically lie at this location one so that is the final uh, basically basic meaning of uh, the center of mass moving along the same line only even other disintegration happen upon m Okay, so basically this will be applicable for basically the center of mass, not for center of velocity here. So if I do it for not this, if I do it for this m one x one and m two x two upon m, then I will get that these are at this location which is lying along the same line through which this uh, rad radium is being propagated. Usually, okay. So I hope this example is clear to you. The basic findings of this example is simply that it doesn't depend. as long as it doesn't depend even the integration is done explosion is done any sort of fusion or fusion is done if the mass remains constant and uh, no external force is being acted upon then we can simply apply the concept of linear momentum on this system of okay. fine so that thing being said uh, let me just conclude this complete concept so separating the motion of different parts of a system into motion of the center of mass and motion about the center of mass is a very useful technique that helps in understanding the motion of the system okay so that how we can understand this complete concept okay. fine so that is the ending of your this this uh, sub topic also which was based upon your linear momentum of a system of particles okay so just a quick revision of everything which we have done done till now So in the first concept we started with the introduction. Then the second concept regarding your center of mass. We have understood basically that uh, x is nothing but equal to summation m i x i upon capital M. This sorry. This is capital X. Capital Y is basically summation m i. Y I upon capital M, and Z is basically summation M I Z I upon capital. M. Okay, so this is possible if you take some system of particles. But if we take, let us assume for a very finite area, then this has to be shaped or modified into differential form. So basically, we can say that X is nothing but equal to one by M integral X dm capital Y is equal to One by m integral y dm, and similarly, what is z? Z is nothing but equal to one by m integral z dm. Okay. So I hope this concept is clear to you. Then after this concept, we understood about the motion of center of mass. So motion of center of mass. Okay. So in this, basically, what we understood first of all, we know that uh, let's say for some system of particles. Capital X only if you are talking about even dimension. That is nothing but equal to m one x one. Or let us take it in vector form. Let us not take it in one dimension. Let us take this in vector form. Therefore, we can say m capital R is nothing but equal to m one R one plus m two R two. The dot 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 till m n R n. Right. If we differentiate this, we will get m capital V is nothing but equal to m one V one plus m two V two plus dot 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 till M N R N, correct? 
and uh, similarly if we do it for acceleration then it will be nothing but equal to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 dot 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 m n a n right if you see clearly this m1 a1 can be nothing but said as some forces acting on a particle so that force is nothing but a summation of your f external and f internal but because uh, applying the newton's third law of motion you can simply say that this f internal value is nothing but zero okay because they are opposite to each other and therefore the actual summation will lead that value to be equal to zero so we can basically say directly that mass times acceleration of the center of mass is basically equal to force external okay and then in the final concept we just understood right now that was about linear momentum of system of particles we understood that if the system is conserved oh sorry if the amount of f external value is equal to zero we can say that the linear momentum is conserved or we can say that the p value is constant okay so that was a quick revision of every concept which we have understood till now now let us understand a little bit more or basically the final understanding which is required as far as vector quantities are being considered okay so that is vector product of two vector so if you remember we have started with the concept understanding of your uh, vector products in the chapter of uh, motion in a plane and the motion in a straight line basically and then in work energy and power okay so we started with the understanding basic definition of vectors in motion in a straight line so basically what is a vector a vector is a quantity which has a magnitude and a direction right then we understood in motion in a plane about the addition so let me just write also so we understood about addition and uh, subtraction of vectors addition and subtraction of vectors okay so just a quick revision so let's say if i need to uh, do addition analytically for some vector a and b a and b just at some angle theta then what i can say i can directly say r is nothing but equal to root over a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta clear so that is your resultant right and uh, what else i can explain to you okay and then next in the in, uh, in the chapter work energy and power we have understood about the dot vector product so dot vector so basically what was dot vector product it basically says that a dot b is nothing but equal to magnitude of a multiplied by magnitude of b multiplied by cos theta where theta is the angle between. Okay, so it's a scalar quantity. Please remember. And now, uh, when you were when when I was explaining you about uh, scalar this dot product, you also understood. You uh, made you understood that there are two ways in which the multiplication of vectors can happen. One is your scalar product. Another is your vector product. Okay, so now dot. So this is nothing but your scalar product happening. And now we will understand about the uh, cross vector product or basically vector product, uh, another vector product which basically results the answer in vector formation. Okay, so that thing being said, uh, then let us pause this complete lecture and then we'll move on with further discussion in the next part. Okay, so let me just introduce you to this concept and then we can move. Okay, so we are already familiar with vectors and their use in physics. In the chapter work energy and power, we define the scalar product of two vectors. So basically, this is nothing but a dot b is nothing but equal to magnitude of a into magnitude of b into cos theta. Where what is cos theta? That is this is vector a, this is vector b, and this is that angle theta. Okay. Now an important physical quantity work. Is defined as a scalar product of two vector quantities, force and displacement. We know we have understood this in vector work energy concept, work energy and power uh, chapter. That is, this is nothing but scalar product of f dot d. This is nothing but equal to f d cos theta. Okay. Now we shall define another product of two vectors where this product is a square. Basically, this product is a square as in the output which comes out is basically a vector. Two important quantities in the study of in the study of rotational motion, namely moment of a force. So we will understand what is this moment of a force and angular momentum. We will also understand what is angular momentum in subsequent slides. They are defined as vector products only. 
So before understanding this moment of a force and uh, angular momentum, let us first understand the concept of vector product. Okay. So let me just start explaining. So first of all, definition of a vector product. So a vector product of two vectors, a vector product of two vectors, A, let me write A as like this and B as like this, is a vector C, is a vector C such that, first of all, what is its magnitude? Let us first calculate magnitude. Magnitude of C is equal to, magnitude of C is equal to A, B, sin theta. Okay, where theta is the angle of the two. So I will write that also. Where theta is the angle between A and B. Okay, fine. That thing being said, next thing is that C is perpendicular to the plane, the direction of C basically. So C is perpendicular. C is perpendicular to the direction of A and B. Perpendicular to the, or we can say perpendicular to the plane containing A and B. Fine. So that is the basic concept of vector product. So we can also write it as A cross B is nothing but equal to magnitude of A into magnitude of B into sin. Now let us understand first of all the analogy or how we actually calculate this value of direction of uh, uh, vector product. Okay. So just place your hand on this such that, such that your thumb is pointing in this direction. So basically, so basically do it. Uh, place your place your palm. Place your palm. Let me just draw it. So place your palm in this fashion, right? And and try to close your fist. Try to close your fist from A to B. So it's A to B. It's written as A cross B, na? So try to close your fist such that this should be the direction of your closing. But when you try to close your fist, a direction in which the thumb will rise up, that is the direction of your A cross. Explain it, explaining it once again, explain it once again, what is happening here? Let us say that uh, this is your fist, this is your initial portion of fist, and now you move your fist in this direction. So when you move your fist in this direction, you were initially at A, you went to B. When you were initially at A and you went to B, basically your thumb was pointing in this direction and that is basically the direction of your A cross B. So basically if you take a right-handed screw with its head lying in the plane of A and B and the screw is perpendicular to the plane and if you turn the head in the direction from A to B then the tip of the screw advances in the direction of C. Okay. So this right-handed screw is given here. Okay. That is how it has been explained. So you can clearly see from the diagram, you can clearly see from the diagram that A cross B, just try to calculate the value of A cross B, direction of A cross B, not the magnitude. The direction of A cross B is in this direction. Now try to calculate the value of B cross A. You would try to calculate the value of B cross A, put your fist, it, fist, fist up here and go in this fashion. If you will go in this fashion, you will obtain that the direction of C will be in this direction. So the magnitude is same, but the direction is different. So this is one of the property which you obtain for the vector product that is a cross b is basically minus b cross a. Fine. So that thing being said, let me just finally conclude this lecture. So the first thing is what is the magnitude? Magnitude of vector product is basically equal to c, which is equal to a b sin theta. And second thing is that uh, the direction is perpendicular to a n. Direction is perpendicular to learn to A and B. Also, we obtained that this is basically, uh, this is one of the property of your vector. Okay. So let me stop the discussion here only. For just the course progress for you, we have started with the introduction, completed the concept of center of mass, completed the concept of motion of center of mass, completed the concept of linear momentum of a system of particles, and currently we are understanding vector product of two vectors so that we can understand different concepts which involve these vector product. Okay? Right. Let me stop it here. Thank you for this lecture. We will meet again in the next lecture. So thank you so much.